sponsored by NordVPN. On Wall Street this past week, plenty of chaos. Led by something called Wall Street Bets, a popular foul-mouthed Reddit page. These next generation investors have sent the financial world into an absolute frenzy. And decided to buy stock in a company called GameStop. Traders encouraging each other to push shares higher and squeeze out short sellers. Going after the people I despise the most in our society, speculators on Wall Street. So they decided we're going to buy games that we're going to fuck their whole system up. And it was all because of these guys. Late 2020. Guys, was that it's face? now almost a year into the coronavirus and people have been locked in their homes for months on end. Stocks are still fiery hot and everyone in the first world now makes their living trading them. It had been a bit bumpy, but the market <laughs> continues its moon mission. Now, the money printer had been dialed down for a while now. <laughs> that video this point, is a classic. Its job was done. So many attendees had been acquired trading stocks that the smell of grease emanated to every corner of the internet. Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok. Zoomers were fascinated. The stock market? Wasn't that a thing for boomers in New York? Well, no. Turned out that anyone anywhere could sign up and trade. Uh oh. Look, even their favorite Twitch streamers are doing it. It was clear. It was literally free money. So people jump in in droves. So many people that platforms like Robinhood and Trading212 see millions of users sign up in just a few months. However, when these new traders sign up, they have an issue. They don't know anything about actually trading stocks. <laughs> so they scour the internet for some advice. They dig through stock twits, trading discord servers, Yahoo Finance comments sections. No sign of intelligence anywhere. But eventually, one by one, they find themselves on a web forum. Blown up Robin Hood accounts and half-eaten crayons are strewn across the floor. Wolf of Wall Street scenes and trading memes hang from the walls. A stench of chicken tenders roams so potent, their nostril hair dissolves instantly. Wall Street Bets, a subreddit full of degenerate gamblers, apes, and a sea of self-proclaimed autists and retards, all losing so much money trading stocks. Not even their wives' boyfriends could bail them out. My God. Its reputation in early 2020 was ghastly, and most that stumbled upon the forum recoiled in disgust <laughs> before turning away and never looking back. However, for those that stayed, 2021 would change everything. Jesus, man. The setup. Early 2019, Reddit user you slash deep fucking value looks at his savings account. It looks pretty healthy. So naturally, he looks to YOLO it all on a single stock. He spends weeks digging through articles and posts, but eventually, he finds a stock he likes. GameStop. Wait, GameStop? The place you went to trade your games in for a fraction of the price you paid for them? The same place that sells a physical version of a product that's being downloaded online 80% of the time? the place losing more than half a billion dollars a year. Uh, okay. That didn't sound like the best investment. But deep fucking value's done a bit more research than your average bloke, and it looked like they were actually turning their business around. Turns out that at some point, they must have realized that selling hard copies of video games probably wasn't the thing to focus on in 2019, and started focusing on online retail and merchandise instead. Look at the ponies! Also, Jesus the next generation God. of gaming consoles was just round the corner, which meant only one thing. Trading at $5 a share, meaning a valuation of just $350 million, it was golden. So in June 2019, he goes in on $50,000 worth of GME cools with expiry dates far out in early 2021. Now he just had to wait. A couple of months later, and in August, Michael Bowie, one of the first people to short the housing bubble in 2008, Announces he's also in on GME for around $10 million. Naturally, deep fucking values calls get a nice boost. So he posts his positions on Wall Street bets. However, instead of applause, he's met with universal mockery. <laughs> GameStop? Retarded, people said. The company was the next blockbuster, and this man's calls were a ticking time bomb. He reads the sea of comments lambasting his positions, but he was confident. He liked the stock so he stays locked in. He continues to post updates on his GME positions monthly, 
but Wall Street Bets takes no notice. <laughs> oh well, GameStop has its annual earnings in just a few months. This should be good. And on January the 13th, the earnings report drops. It was absolutely dreadful. Revenue was down 30% year on year, and the stock tanks around 40%. It was fine. GME could bounce back from this. But by late February, it becomes apparent a global pandemic is probably hitting US shores. Jesus Christ. I'll just check back in a few months' time. A few months later, and it's November 2020. At this point, Wall Street Bets has found its own darling stock, Palantir, a US software analytics firm that was scoring government contracts like they were going out of fashion. Wall Street Bets didn't really understand what they actually did, but there were rocket emojis everywhere. The answer was obvious. And Palantir's share price triples in just under a month. The gains were sublime. However, eventually, the stock plateaus in the high 20s and doesn't do much for a while. They check back in on deep fucking value. Wait a second. Turns out that while they'd been busy with Palantir, GME shares were being bought up by e-commerce entrepreneur Ryan Cohen, bringing the share price to around $20, meaning deep fucking value's calls were now worth around $2 million. He'd actually turned a profit. Wow. People beg him to sell, to just take his winnings and leave. GameStop was still doomed to fail, but deep fucking value shows no interest. Hold on a sec. Was he actually on to something? Wall Street Bet's top men get what to work, and strategy. after a few nights of research, they spot something. It was the short interest. It was absolutely massive. What's shorting? Well, it's essentially betting that a stock is going to go down. How does it work? Basically, someone owns GameStop shares. You think its share price is going to drop, so you borrow these shares from the owner, then sell them on promising to repurchase these shares and deliver them back to the owner by a certain point in the future. If the stock goes down in the meantime, you can buy the shares back cheaper, closing your short position and making money on the difference. But if it goes up, you've got an extra shift at McDonald's tonight. Now GME's short interest is around 80%, meaning that 8 in every 10 shares on the market are currently sold short. That was a lot of shares. Wall Street bets take a second to ponder. Hmm. See, people that short GameStop have borrowed stock in order to sell it, which means they're trading on borrowed capital. That also means they can't take too much of a loss on their position. One, because their potential losses are infinite. And two, in case they fail to pay back the shares. So if the shares were to, hypothetically, go to the moon, shorts would either have to put more cash in their account, essentially doubling down, or close their positions, buying back the stock at an elevated price to pay them back to the owner, bringing the stock price up even further. Now if 80% of GameStop's tradable shares are sold short, and the price goes up so much that all there. shorts have to close their positions, it would result in a massive short squeeze. Basically, a hell of a lot of buying. Now GME only has around 50 million shares on the market. If Wall Street Bets could muster up the buying power for a few million shares and just hold, not only would there be an absolutely massive short squeeze, but also very few shares available to actually buy, forcing shorts to bid higher and higher in order to pay back their shares. People post their hypothesis immediately. Listen boys, the plan is simple. We buy the stock, and we don't sell. Tendies were practically guaranteed, they explain. Wall Street bets were fascinated. Around the same time, shorts on Wall Street gather round. Gentlemen, this is outrageous. GameStop is literally bleeding half a billion dollars out the arse each year, and its stock price has done nothing but go up. We've got no option. It's time to double down. The spree of short selling that follows is nothing short of insane. Tens of millions of shares are borrowed in a matter of weeks, with millions of dollars from all around Wall Street pouring in. The magnitude of sell orders is unimaginable. However, the price still doesn't budge, so even more sell orders come in. At this point, so many shares are being shorted that shares already sold short are being shorted again, meaning millions of shares are short two or more times over. The result? 70 million shares, around 140% of available stock, are sold short. More shares than could actually be purchased. There was only one entity able to utilize this much capital. Hedge funds. They'd clearly colluded behind closed doors to short GameStop into the ground. Leading this charge 
with a short position of over $100 million, a hedge fund called Melvin Capital. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity, so Wall Street bets suit up with calls, shares, and anything they could get their hands on. Before we move on, hackers are everywhere. Wherever you go, anyone could be out for your data. Uh oh. Is it you, Susan? Okay. And if you're on an unsecure Wi Fi connection, they're basically playing on easy. Now he sees everything. Jesus Christ, does he have NordVPN? My God. NordVPN secures your internet through an encrypted VPN tunnel, as well as changing that pesky IP address. This now is a you're good video chat. untraceable. One of six devices. Them. Sound complicated? It's not. Just open up NordVPN, click a server, and you're out of there. Also, a 30 day money back guarantee, a tight no log policy, access to geo restricted content, including Netflix, YouTube, and other social media networks, and thousands of high speed servers to choose from. And you can get NordVPN on virtually any platform for 70% off through the I link in it. the description. I'm buying right That's now. That's $3.56 a month, plus one month free. Oh no. December 2020. Word has spread far and wide, and hordes of people on Wall Street bets are loading up on GME and holding on for dear life. Their shares weren't going anywhere. However, it's not long before they start seeing some action. On January the 13th, GameStop announces Ryan Cohen and friends are joining the company's board of directors, and GME begins its takeoff. It soars to $40 the next day. It's fine, it's just day traders. $70 on the 22nd. Alright, the price should come back down any day now. $160 on the 26th. Okay, a bit of heat here boys. But it's gonna be all right. Three hundred and seventy dollars on the twenty seventh. Jesus Christ! Who's buying at these prices? <laughs> My God! And finally, in pre-market trading on the twenty eighth, it hits five hundred dollars. <laughs> at this point, the whole world was watching. More than half of Robinhood users had bought the stock, and thousands more were lining up to join in. At $500 a share, GameStop is now worth around $35 billion, more than a fifth of the global gaming industry's entire value, and Deep Fucking Value's account is currently up to $50 million, 1,000 times his original investment. But retail traders weren't done just yet. Wait a second, boys. All these other stocks are being heavily shorted too. And so, Wall Street bets jump in. <laughs> and it works. Short squeezes erupt market wide and other companies like AMC shoot up around 600%. However, this surge of short squeezes causes hedge funds to close on a ton of their positions, sending the wider market into free fall. And while every tech, growth, and energy stock absolutely nosedives, the hottest stocks of 2005 head to the skies. No, yeah. The hedge funds were mortified. So this was how the market dies, with thunderous applause. Wall Street bets had done it. An almost 3,000% short squeeze, proposed, agreed upon, and executed by a horde of degenerates on an online web forum. They were rich. What do we buy? Lambos? Hookers? More crayons? Hold on, gentlemen. The squeeze has yet to even squoze. They look at deep fucking value. He sold a few cools, but for the most part, he's still holding strong. Hold the line, boys. This thing is headed for 1,000. <laughs> And so, thousands of GME holders don't sell, and many start buying in. However, as the market opens on the 28th, they hear some grave news. Robinhood just stepped in, and they're saying no. They ban the buying of all of Wall Street Bet's hottest stocks. However, you could still sell them. GameStop, AMC, BlackBerry, all shot down in a single move. But that wasn't enough. Wall Street Bets still had key communication lines on their Discord server, and it just so happens higher ups at Discord had hit the brakes on that too. The damage was immeasurable. GameStop absolutely craters and falls from $500 to $200 in just two hours. It bounces up and down over the next two days, but by the 1st of February, it was clear it was heading south. 
Now at this point, meme production was in full swing. People were flying planes, buying billboards, even in Times Square. GME was everywhere, but the stock remained in freefall. And by early February, GameStop had fallen back to $50 a share. <laughs> Thousands of bank holders were born. It was over. So many classes in there, dude. <laughs> the damage on Wall Street was significant. After the dust settled, over 5,000 firms had lost money on GME shorts, with a grand total of $70 billion down the drain. Melvin Capital takes the cake on these losses, ending January around 53% down and in need of a $3 billion bailout. That was a lot of damage, but it could have been a lot more if Robin Hood didn't step in and cock everything up. Naturally, rumors begin to circulate that big boy hedge funds had ordered Robin Hood to step in to help save their asses. People were furious, and small protests on Wall Street erupt within a few days. However, the outrage of Robin Hood's decision spread far further than the musty basements of Wall Street beds. Politicians were hearing about it. They weren't happy. And for a brief moment in US politics, people from both sides of the aisle actually agree on something. Robin Hood bad. So in mid-February, congressional hearings about the GameStop situation go underway. The heads of Robin Hood and Melvin Capital are summoned immediately. However, deep fucking value is called upon too, upon suspicion of <laughs> market manipulation for his Reddit posts. The hearings are long and boring, and not much comes out of them. However, deep fucking value is asked if he'd buy more GameStop at the current price, $40. He says yes, and the next day, his portfolio is 50,000 shares heavier. Just a few days later, and she delivers another ascent okay. into the heavens. And Deep Fucking Value's new shares net him $10 million within three weeks. He still doesn't sell. So, was Robin Hood actually colluding with hedge funds? Well, no, not really. It's a bit complicated, but basically, during the squeeze, there's a bit of a liquidity crisis within Robin Hood. See, brokers have to pay a fee to their clearinghouse after every trading day. This fee is usually within the hundreds of millions, but varies based on trading volume and volatility. That, that, so that most makes brokers sense. have teams that monitor these factors in real time to determine what their fee will be before their build and whether they need to arrange extra funding beforehand. But over at Robinhood, their risk management thinks this is silly. Why pay for a monitoring team when you can just wait till the end of the day and find out for free? For a few years, uh. this was going great. But on the week of the squeeze, there's a little more volatility in the market. So Robinhood's clearinghouse asks for a bit more cash. Usually, it's in the realm of a few hundred million. But today, it was three billion dollars. Robinhood does not have that much money. However, if they were to shut down some of the more volatile stocks, they could knock the fee down to just 700 million. They take the offer and shut down the stocks, reallowing purchasing as soon as they raise some more cash a few days later. So it looks like Robin Hood is in the clear. However, oh. as it turns out, Robin Hood's users aren't the biggest fans of having their shares outright <laughs> banned. Many leave the platform as a result. But by the end of the squeeze, a lot of new traders had joined the subreddit. So many that the subreddit grows from 2 to 8 million members in a matter of days. As a result, it's now filled to the brim with room temperature IQ traders, and the quality of posts plummet. However, Establishment firms on Wall Street are interested, and job listings attempting to hire these new traders start popping up. Salaries in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Requirements? A high Reddit karma, a rich taste in memes, Guys, I have, and a higher question. education uh, in finance. I have a question, chat. But after it was all said and done. Chat, isn't this a temp like a temporary problem? Like, um, whatever happens with the money, the money w would come back, right? Like, um... It's not, like, it's not like the, the company's going to disappear or, or, or poof, right? Like, like whatever the company was going to lose or, or it's all temporary, right? At the end of the day or not. It poofs. People returned to the subreddit. Together, they'd made tens of millions of dollars. It was time to give back. But where? There was only one answer. Ape Foundations. They donate so much money. They adopt 3,500 apes in six days. Wait, so, so couldn't, couldn't a rich company or a big entity like help them out? If they see this is happening and this could have bigger repercussions on the market, couldn't they help them in, in like 
loan them money that they know for a fact is going to come back or something so they don't so the customers and people who like daily investors don't lose all their money for no reason as for gamestop its share price shot up for a second time in late february rising more than 600 percent and almost touching 350 dollars giving out, thousands of bag holders worldwide an exit point their money was back today gamestop is on the rise again and remains valued at over 15 billion dollars and deep fucking value continues to hold over 30 million dollars of shares <laughs> that was a good video i actually enjoyed that a lot you guys it Wait, is the room loud? Oh, that was like the back center. That video, I enjoyed it.